I'm humbled that he's here. I'm excited that he is here. It's been a very long time. We've been trying our best to get him here for several years now. And at this time, please stand to your feet all over the building. Put your hands together. For Bishop-elect Param Jyoti as he comes. We greet you all from India, the Temple of Christ. We are so excited to be here. God is so good and He is a faithful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whom we are worshiping as the God of Almighty. He's the great God. He never fails what He promises. He is a faithful God. We thank you all so much. And uh, before I preach something, I would like to let you know a little bit. Pastor Lama, Dr. Anderson, 15 years back, they've been in India. 15 years back. So the relationship and the fellowship, every day is uh, getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I asked the Lord Jesus, Jesus, you're the mighty God. Why don't you open the doors for us uh, to worship at the Temple of Christ in Washington, D.C.? You know, the answer of my question, what the Lord has given me, my son, Jodi, there is a time. You have to endure the time comes. Okay, my Lord, I obey you. I will wait for until the time comes. So a few days back, again, the Lord reminded me, hey, the time has come. Go to Washington, D.C. and worship the Lord. Worship me there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. What a mighty God we have. God is so good. Your God and my God, the same God. Yesterday and today, same forever. He never changes what he is. He is the mighty God you have. The mighty God, the same God I have. You and me, we are worshiping the Almighty tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. God is so good. He brought us together and connected us supernaturally with the temple of Christ. You may think that we have only one church here. No, you have 600 churches in India. Temple of Christ has 600 churches. 600 pastors are working. Imagine 600 pastors, 600 churches, not only the 600 churches, but also 60 key leaders also overseeing the entire work in India, the Temple of Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, God is so good. We thank God that he has uh, given us a wonderful time to be here and worship along with you, all the mighty God tonight. This is my wife. The same passion what I have. The same burden what she has, God put into our hearts about the bringing of the souls before God. Millions of souls to bring before the Lord Jesus Christ this end time. Not only the planting the churches and casting the seed of God's word, but also he has given us more passion into our hearts. To take care of the orphans, the street orphans. Not only the street orphans, but also looking after the elderly people who are abandoned from the families. Not only the elderly people, but also poor widows who were cast out from the families, who were cast out from the society, who were cast out from the government. Lord gave us such a burden to care of those widows and love them as Jesus loved. Not only those uh, 
elderly people, widows, but also the Lord gave us the passion to take care of the leprosy people. The government rejected the lepers. The society rejected the lepers. The friends left, rejected the lepers. But God, he didn't reject the lepers. He said, my son Param, I love these leprosy people. You also love the lepers because you are my son. I have a passion on these lepers. You also have the same passion. I love about the lepers. You also have the same love. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's a mighty God. Nothing is impossible before whom we're worshiping. Yes, the God of Almighty. God is so good. Let us, I request you please continuously pray for in India, all the churches of the Temple of Christ in India. All the pastors, they're working on behalf of Temple of Christ. You don't think that we have only few churches. You have many churches. Come to India and see the Temple of Christ's churches. Oh, everybody, they are praying for you all. Every day they are remembering you. Every day, every day, every day. Even the leprosy people. Lord Jesus, bless the temple of Christ in Washington, D.C. Lord Jesus, bless the people of the church who are there. Harpons, they are praying for you. The elderly people pray are praying for you. And uh, the widow, poor widows who are cast out from the government, from the society, they are lifting you all every day before. Even the lepers, they are lifting you before. Lord Jesus, the church, the temple of Christ church in Washington, D.C., please uh, that church uh, and use uh, the bishop and use the uh, pastor Lama and use the deacons uh, and uh, oh, elders of that church. Oh, we want to see the many, many, many churches in the days to come. We want to see the growth and going of this uh, temple of Christ. Uh, many, many branches, not only in India, but all over the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. And I praise God for this. What God is doing in our midst. God is he's a faithful God. He's a great God. He's a wonderful God. He's awesome. He is everlasting. He is a great God. The whole universe has been created by Him only, not other gods. God is He is a living God. He is a mighty God. Let us. Uh, I request you please continuously pray for the ministry in India. Pray for all the pastors of uh, oh, the Temple of Christ in India. Please uh, pray for all the activities what we are doing by faith uh, on behalf of Temple of Christ in India. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you all so much. We love you all so much. We are praying for you every day. I hope and believe that in the days to come, the Lord will bless this church abundantly and we will have many, many more churches in the days to come. Oh, Temple of Pride churches, we will have many, many more. This is really God told me to tell you. You will see what God is going to do. He is a faithful God. He is a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you so much. And uh, yeah, if Pastor Lemmer, if he gives me maybe a few more, I mean, a few more minutes, then I can preach a little bit. Otherwise, I can stop it. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> Five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Let us, uh, you know, God is a great God. Everybody knows that. Just five minutes, I can complete it. I want you to read uh, Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, verse 48 to 50. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. 
And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this? Who even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know this story, everybody. You know, one day Jesus, he was thinking about uh, the place where he has been invited. The Pharisee, he has invited Jesus to his home to have a meal. Before he has invited the Pharisee, oh, he informed to everybody who were living there. So at the same time, there was a woman, oh, sinful woman. He heard, oh, he heard the propaganda. He heard what the Pharisee announced, oh, Jesus is coming to my home to have a meal along with my family. Oh, that entire city heard that Jesus is oh, coming to the Pharisee, the house of the Pharisees. Everybody knows that. They heard everybody. So then uh, this woman, she started to think, Oh, I am a sinful woman. Among the society, among my people, oh, they are not uh, allowing me to Communicate with them. They are not allowing me to mingle with them. They are not allowing me to roam here and there. They are not allowing me to have a fellowship with this society. Oh, what can I do? Then she's, oh, finally, eventually, oh, she thought herself, oh, Jesus is coming to the Pharisee's house. I, if I go there, if I may there, if I oh, see the Jesus Christ, I may be perfect, I may be good, oh, maybe my all sins might be forgotten. So I let me go there and see the Jesus Christ. Oh, she went there. She went there. Oh, Jesus, he was sitting on the table. Oh, she came back and stood behind the Jesus and was weeping and crying and tearing her heart. Oh, the weeping. Oh, the tears of her weeping. Oh, they flow like a river oh, and touch. The feet of Jesus Christ. Immediately Jesus, oh, shocked about it. What happened? What's going on there? Maybe some water oh, hit me. Oh, some water. I felt that uh, wet my feet. Uh, who is that? She, oh, he turned back and saw that. Oh, immediately the lady, what she did. Oh, she came before him. Oh, she loved her air so much. Oh, she her, oh, loved her so much. Because of long hair she had. Very curly hair she had. Immediately, oh, the water on the feet of Jesus. She took out, oh, her head, the air, and washed. Then immediately Jesus' heart Oh, broken it. Oh, my lovely lady, what you have faith on me. Oh, my lovely lady, my daughter, what you have faith on me. Oh, Jesus oh, thought himself. Not only that, at the same time, oh, she bought a nice smell of oh, fragrant and oh, put it. Oh, then what happened? The Pharisee of the People who are oh, surrounding there, who are sitting, who are sitting around the table, they murmured themselves, "Hey Jesus, what is going on? Are you not prophet? If you are a prophet, you would have not allowed this lady to come to you." Oh, they were thinking, and then Jesus said, "You know, finally, what he said when I came to your home." You didn't give me the water to drink. When I came to your home, you didn't give me the towel to wipe my face. She gave that. She gave that. Oh, my lady, my lovely daughter, your sins are forgiven. 
go with the face hallelujah hallelujah oh my brother and sister whatever the problems you have whatever the circumstances you have whatever you're facing at your home whatever you're facing in your people whatever facing your among community yeah he will wash all of us he will redeem you he will protect you he loves you so much thank you sir thank you very much Oh, we bless God for him. Amen. And amen and amen again. I, I don't know if you guys heard something. He said, um, I, I, I spoke, we had 202 churches when the first time we went over there. He said, it's over 600 churches that he covers up under him. Amen. That there is awesome. He said the Lord told him to tell us that we won't just be in India, but we will be worldwide. <laughs> Amen. I'm so excited on this coming Sunday morning. Amen. We will have the official consecration service. Amen. We can bless God for that, the official consecration service. Bishop Parham Jyoti, amen. Amen. Let us stand to our feet for the reading of the word on tonight. Amen. We thank you for your giving. Thank you for your sacrifice. Matthew 18, verse number 15, when you have it, please say amen. Well, that's not enough. I'm going to wait for you. Hey, I'm waiting. That was, that was real. That was real slow right there. Amen. Matthew 18, verse 15, chapter 18, verse 15, amen. My man. You know, I love my church. Y'all know that, right? I love my church. I love my church. Amen. Do me a favor. Reach over. Just bump somebody quickly. Say, we're going we to have a little fun tonight. We're going to have a little fun tonight. Bump them. Bump them. Bump them. Amen. Bump them. Amen. Amen. Matthew 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go, tell him his faults between thee and him alone. Ooh, that's good right there. Uh-huh. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained a brother. If thou would not hear thee, then take three. Excuse me, take thee, one or two. In the mouth of the two witnesses and the three witnesses, Every word may be established, but if, I'm going to keep moving, but if, but if, he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, mm, let him be like as a heathen mm, and a publican. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. Be with us, Lord God, in a few moments that we have to share with you tonight. Speak to me. Speak through me. Use your servant, Lord God. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Touch somebody. Tell them, get over it. Get over it. Get over it. Amen. Get over it. Get over it.
Ooh, that's good right there. Get over it. Amen. Get over it. Half of the problems that we often have time have in church is that we don't get over the problems that we often face and the issues that we often face. Amen. We, we don't want to let go of the things that we need to let go of uh, uh, simply because we were hurt, we were damaged, we were going through problems, we were going through issues. And, and oftentimes our issues are, are not just issues at home, it's often issues inside of the church. Amen. And tonight, I'm going to try to help you do the best that we can tonight. Amen. I'm going to do the best I can tonight to try to help uh, us look at some of the issues that we have and try to resolve them the biblical way. And we can use these same principles not only in the church, but we can use them at home. We can use them at work. Amen. Amen. So, so that way we can get past and get over the stuff that's holding us back. Are y'all following me tonight? Because oftentimes the stuff that we have that's following, that, that, that we have issues with, is, is very simple things, but we allow those simple things to fester and go undealt with. A glory to God. Amen. We allow those things that, 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 that happen to us, uh, we allow them to fester. We allow them to, to grow into something that it shouldn't be simply because we didn't want to face the problem that, 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 came, that, that came to us. Amen. Just simply because we didn't want to, um, how, how can I say this, confront the person that we have the issue with. Amen. Y'all had your pens and papers tonight? Okay, Matthew 18, there's a simple principle uh, that, that we can use as far as uh, facing our unresolved issues. Facing our unresolved issues. Um, this is one thing I want to look at. The first thing you see inside of this scripture, you, you, you'll find out that, 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 that if you're human, everybody human in the building? Everybody that's human? Are you? If you're human, let me hear you holler one time. If you're human, holler. Simply because you're human, you have human characteristics, and oftentimes you will irritate somebody simply because you are human. And I know you want to think that you're perfect, but I'm sorry to tell you, you're not perfect. I, I don't think I'm going to get a lot of help today. Amen. I, I might not be talking about cars and houses and, you know. Stuff like that. I might not get a lot of amens, but, but, but if you pay attention today, we're going to be all right. Amen. We're going to be just fine. Um, I, I like facing with stuff that challenge us to do better. Amen. Amen. I like facing things that are just going to challenge us to do better. Um, I, I know the word, and I know we're going you know, we, to walk into our wealthy place, and I, and I know that's coming, and I, and I feel it. Matter of fact, I feel it all over me. Amen. That we're going to walk into our, our wealthy place. But, but walking into our wealthy place, we often got to deal with stuff that we don't want to deal with. Amen. Amen. So if you're human, you probably have irritated somebody in your life. Matter of fact, um, you might have irritated somebody today. You should see the way they're looking at me right now. Amen. You got on somebody's nerves today. Matter of fact, somebody didn't got on your nerves. Okay, all right. All right. Somebody got on your nerves today. There's a way that we can deal with certain things that's out of the church and, and at work and at home. Uh, the very first thing that you, that you should do is uh, write this down. Uh, keep it confidential. The scripture said, go to him alone. Okay. If you got a problem and or issue with your brother or, and or your sister, you don't, uh, you don't run out there and run in your mouth to everybody. The first thing you do is you go to them. Okay. All right, let me, let me help us do this today. Let's help us do this today. Come, come here, Howard, because, you know, people don't like you. Y'all go, see, I'm going to just be honest. Can we just be honest? Hey, man. He's a good man, great heart and all of that, but, you know, it's okay. The Lord going to bless us all. Amen. Bless the Lord Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord Jesus. But see, this is what we do. This is the problem. This is the problem. Now, 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 he has irritated me, and me and him have a problem. Me and him have an issue, and he done done something that, that I think is totally, totally wrong. The Bible says for me to go to him 
talk to him directly. And once I talk to him directly, if he sees the problem, amen, if he sees the problem, then I would have gained a brother. Keep it confidential. Keep the matter between y'all. See, but what we do is this. I can't stand him. He didn't got on my nerves. He didn't cause me all kind of problems and headaches, and he irritates my very soul. So what I do is I come over here, and I tell him, that guy over there, he, 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 I don't know what it is about that guy right there. I'm trying to figure this thing out, and I got a problem with him. Have you ever had a problem with him? I think you've had a problem. Have you had a problem? You've had a problem with him? Okay, yeah, you had a problem. Both of us had problems with him, right? So now me and him both got a problem with him. And then I slide over here too. Come here, man. And now, now I'm talking to him, and then you, you didn't have a problem with him too. I didn't have a problem. You had a problem. We both had problems with him. We, you don't like him either, huh? We ain't done none of it. We all really got problems with him, right? So now, so now what we have done is that we now, all three of us, got a problem with the same person, amen, and we're not, um, we, we, don't, we don't have the guts, I would say, amen, to deal with the situation directly, and since we can't deal with it directly, what I do is I go get a bunch of people around, so now, now my issue that I first had is not just for me and him, now it's me, him, him, and we all don't like him, and now I got my own clique of folk that don't like him. Woo, we're going to have church in here tonight because I'm so sick and tired of clicks in church. It don't make no sense. Oh, it, Amen. I'm just trying to tell you how clicks develop in church, just how clicks develop in church. So, so now all of us together, so, so since we are all together, we, we, we hang together now right. because we got a mutual issue with him. We got a mutual problem with him over there. We, we, so, so that way we go out to dinner later. We go do this, and all we do is sit around and talk about him. That's wrong. Oh, we're going to have fun tonight. Amen. I bind that spirit of click in this house in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We will get over this. We will get past this. Okay, all right. So now, so, so, that's what we do. I didn't, I didn't messed up because first the Bible said to go to him and deal with him. But since I didn't go to, go to him, I went to them, and now instead of it being one person, it grew to three, which he got a friend he going to talk to, and he got a friend he going to talk to. And then, and, then, and then before it's all said and done, it's about eight, nine, ten of us that don't like him. But if we were to really act like Christians, amen, if we were to act like Christians for real, 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 real Christians, and, and, and do, do things in love instead of do things in hate. Instead of trying to tear down somebody, we're building somebody up. Uh, we would have came over here, would have had the conversation. Now, now, let's see. Let's say he don't, he don't, he don't receive what I'm saying. He, he don't receive nothing I'm saying at all. And, and now, now it's for me to go get two or three. Because I ain't shared my information yet. But let me, let me tell you something. You just don't go and get two and three on your own. Y'all have to agree. Yeah, that we're going to bring somebody in the, from the outside into this situation. Uh, we're going to do this the right way. Amen. Because we're going to agree. If we can't agree on the issue that we just had, one thing we are going to agree on is say, hey, we can't fix this ourselves. Let's go get some help. Amen. So then what we do? We go get some elders, some leaders. We go get some elders. We go get some leaders. Amen. Come on. Come on, come on elder. Come on. I got you. We go get the elder. Bring him in. Amen. He coming in. And then we go get, we go get another elder. Come on, elder. Come on. We, we, we bring him in. And then, then, then I, get, I get another elder. Come on. Come on. Come on here. Come on here. I, I bring him. I bring him in. And, and then I done, and I done brought all my elders together. We, we agreed to have this conversation, and, and, and this, this is the problem that I have oftentimes with bringing other folk in on a situation between one or two people, um, because I'm the one who thought that I had an issue. I thought that he hurt me. I just knew that he hurt me, and, and I got a problem with him because he hurt my feelings. Yeah, my feelings. My feelings, amen. So he hurt my feelings. Now, I didn't... 
tried to talk to him. It ain't work out. And now when he brought some elders in, so we're telling the problems. We're telling our situation. We're telling everything we're supposed to do. This is what's going on. Da, 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 da. Um, oftentimes when you bring other people that's on the outside that's not biased, what they do, they will look at the situation. And when they look at the situation, the problem might not have been with him. Oh, that's good right there. The problem oftentimes is with you. Ooh. But by bringing somebody else in, it's going to throw the light on you, the problems that you got to fix versus the problems that he has to fix. Hmm. Is that making any sense? Y'all sure that doesn't make any sense? Hey, just, 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 this is what happens. So since I don't really want to deal with this, I'll keep being messy and stay over here with my boys so I can just be messy with the situation because I really don't want to hear the truth that is not really him, but there's a possibility, just small possibility, it's a real small possibility that it's, that it's you. Hmm. I'm looking around because I got folks that's real quiet in the room right now because I think a lot of us, we oftentimes have our problems. So now I done brought, I done brought the elders and we, we done had the conversation and, and, and we still can't get it together. We still can't get it together. You have to understand, once you bring in the elders of the church, you have to be open to reproof. You have to be open to correction. You have to be willing to take the information that they're going to give you. But if you're not willing to take the information that they're going to give you, what's the point of bringing them in in the first place? Amen. So now so we, have, we have our elders, and it didn't work. Y'all go back. Thank you. Thank you. It didn't work. They didn't pray for us. They didn't fast it for us. They didn't lay hands on us. Yeah, y'all know how we do in church. They didn't lay hands on us. We didn't fell in the floor. We didn't shout it and we didn't dance. Glory to God. We even hugged in church. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh, we didn't hug in church and stuff. And I cried on his shoulder. He cried on my shoulder. Oh, we leave out of here in the same place. Come on, the same way you came in. That we came in. Because we never resolved the issue. We just had uh, an emotional. Because I can't say it was a God experience. Because when God steps in, He corrects it. When God steps in, he cleans it up. When God steps in, there will be no more malice or no more issue between us. So I would say we didn't have an emotional moment. And from the emotional moment, we still leave out with the same problems, with the same issues, with the same thing that we've been f f f fighting with and struggling with the entire time. Let's, let's bring this home just a little bit. Have you ever had an argument with your boo? Okay. Have you ever had an issue and a problem with your baby? You know what I mean? I'm talking about, you know, with your husband, with your wife. You ever had, ever had an issue with, with one of them? You know, uh, oftentimes we have an issue with one of them. What, what, we, what we do as men, what we do oftentimes as men is that we're going to say, I'm sorry, and that's it. And we're going to walk away, and we think the problem is done. We think the issue has been done and has been settled and has been, you know, it's, it's over. You know, we done went back to watching the game, and I'm, you know, I'm trying, to, trying to figure out, you know, the food was warm earlier, but it's cold now, and I don't know why my food cold, but yet she still holds on to the problem, and she ain't want to microwave my food because she's still mad at me because we ain't talk about it, and so. Okay, y'all so ain't talking to me for real. Okay, it's all right. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you think the issue's over, and now... Six months later. <laughs> Y'all know I'm talking good in here today. 
six months later, when I done forgot about the problem, forgot about the issue, forgot about the situation, you remember when you did so-and-so? But you held on to this one issue for that long, and it ain't do nothing but bring about different emotional toils, different, amen, depression situations. And now, now you're harboring uh, the problem. Since you're harboring the problem, it's now developed into mood swings. Now, you, now you're fighting with anxiety. Now, 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 now you, one day you're happy, the next day you're sad. One, one moment you one, one moment you having a wonderful time with the kids, the next moment you can't stand being around. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Amen. I'm just, we just gonna be real. So, so I'm fighting with anxiety, mood swings. My my sleep is messed up. Since my sleep is messed up. I, I, I'm not resting the way I'm supposed to rest. So now I'm walking around every day at work and at home and at church irritable. Uh, amen. And, and every time I, I do anything and anybody do anything at all, it could be the slightest thing I go off because I didn't deal with my problems. I didn't face my problems when they happened. I allowed them to fester. I allowed them to build and to turn into something that it should not have been. Okay, let me move on to my next point. Thank you, Howard. I got a couple more minutes and we're gone. Amen. So, so, so the first thing you got to do, you got to keep it confidential. The second thing you got to do, you got to uh, keep your circle small. Don't bring everybody into your business. Amen. Don't bring everybody into your business. Keep your circle small. The problem with us in church is we talk too much. Maybe I'm going to say that one more again. Amen. I'm going to say it one more again. I'm going to say it with authority this time. Amen. The problem with us in church is that we talk too much. Number three, and I'm going to hurry on. Amen. Uh, you got to be straightforward. Be straightforward. Whatever the problem is, don't have a meeting and be beating around the bush. Amen. Okay, all right. You mad that I came in late the other night, but you're going to fuss. Uh, what's a good one? I left clothes hanging out the hamper. So now you're mad about the hamper, but you're really upset that I came in late. Okay, all right. Let me go back on this side. Um, uh, you, you're really mad, amen, that you cut me off in the parking lot when I was pulling onto the church parking lot. Amen. But because you ain't opened the door for me at the door, I'm going to fuss about the door and not about the parking lot. Are we, am I making any sense at all? Be straightforward with, with the problem so that way you can confront it head on. And we're not allowing other things to distract us from getting to the root of the problem. Getting to the root of this. Somebody say the root, the root, the root, the root, the root. Nothing gets solved until you get to the root. Everything else is a Band-Aid. Mm. Uh -huh. All right, number four. I'm going to let that sit right there, you know, if you keep dealing with surface stuff. You ever had a scab, and you kept picking at the scab, and kept picking at the scab, and the scab never heals because you keep picking at it? Mm. And then you're leaving a mark, and now it's infected, and now you got an issue, and now, now you got all... And if you were to just... Okay, um, number four, number four, uh, be forgiving. Be, be forgiving. If, if they hurt your feelings, so what? Forgive them. A amen, amen. 
I knew I wasn't gonna get a lot of amens on that one right there. Cause, Cause we so caught up in trying to hold on to that same thing that we don't wanna forgive nobody for nothing. Amen. Okay. The scripture does say you forgive them seven times. What? I'm so glad y'all know your Bibles. Amen. If, you're, if you are forgiving, then you will, you will gain a brother. You will gain a sister if you're forgiving in the approach. Everything does not call for an argument. This is, real, this is real simple teaching tonight. Everything does not call for an argument. Amen. We argue too much over stuff that don't matter. I'm going to wave back at you. Thank you. Amen. I, I had one in the back. She was waving. I'm going to wave right back at you. Amen. I'm so glad I got one that got my back tonight. Glory to God. Amen. Um, the, the Bible says after, you, after you've been forgiven... You've, you've kept, the, kept the situation small. You were confidential. You were straight up in the situation. It says, if you do not hear them then, you done brought the elders into the church. You done brought everybody in, and, and it still don't work. Um, it said, treat them like a heathen or a publican. Treat them like a heathen or a publican. Um, oftentimes, you hear people talking about the heathen, a heathenistic uh, situation and calling somebody a heathen, amen, uh, oftentimes what, what that means is it's, it's a negative aspect to the word heathen. Heathen, oftentimes, they, they, they say that you should push them out. One, 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 one commentary said that you should leave them alone and push them completely out, amen, push them completely out of the congregation, push them completely out of what it is. I, I, don't, I don't like that. Can I just be honest? I, I, don't, I don't like that, that, that necessarily. I don't, I don't like that. The, re, the reason I don't like that is because I'm so glad I was never pushed out when I was being a heathen. Okay. Amen. I, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one in the building that's ever been a heathen. Maybe I'm the only one in the building ever offended anybody. Maybe I'm the only one in the building ever did anything wrong, said anything wrong, ever stepped on somebody's toes. If I'm, maybe I'm the only one that ever cut somebody off in the car. Maybe I'm the only one that ever had a problem with somebody in church. Maybe I'm the only one that ever had an issue with the deacon board. Maybe I'm the only one that ever had an issue with the usher board. Maybe I'm the only one that ever had a problem with somebody in church. But I'm so glad that even after I couldn't get the situation resolved, that I didn't get kicked out because it was my fault in the beginning anyway. Okay. I, I, I take on the, the principle of love the heck out of somebody. Okay, all right. I was going to cuss, but baby's on the front row. I couldn't do that tonight. Amen. Love the heck out of somebody. If they got any evil in them at all, it's not our job to turn our backs on them. It's not our job to shun them. It's not our job, amen, to kick them out. That's not our job. Our job is to love them until all of the evil comes up out of them. Amen. My, my grandmother did something, um, you know, down in West Virginia. My, my grandma Pauline, amen, she, she would see us out on the porch oftentimes. She would come out on the porch right on Morris Avenue. She would come out on the porch, and, and we'd be running up and down, you know, the neighborhood, you know, because that's right off Morris Avenue. You, you had the, 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 the projects was right up at the top of the hill, and, and we lived in the projects at the top of the hill. Grandma lived in a nice house at the bottom of the hill, amen. But she could see the projects from where she was, so, so she would come out and sit right there on the, on the front porch, and every once in a while, you hear holler, you know, holler out, heathens. Y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of heathens. That's what she said. Running around, and but what she did was, after she finished calling us heathens, she would holler right back up the street, it's time to eat. Okay. 
Y'all did see, see, see. Y'all, y'all missed all of that. She, she called us heathen one moment and then said, hey, it's time to eat in the next moment. Amen. Meaning that she had enough love in us that she was going to feed us until our heathen experiences came up out of us. Ooh, if somebody ever loved you enough to reach out to you, I need you to give God a praise right there. If somebody ever loved you enough to look past your faults and still, if somebody ever loved you enough, even though you were dead wrong, they still reached out for you. Oh, come on, somebody need to praise God in here just for that right there. I'm so glad that God looked past my mess and he saw my needs. He picked me up out of the what? The muck and the mire. He turned me around, placed my feet on, on solid, solid ground. Even when I messed up. It's about you. It's about, it's about you. You, you got to make this personal. It's about you. Amen. Even when I messed up, he still reached down and he didn't forget about me. Ah, glory to God. I thank you. Come on, trust somebody telling me he didn't forget about me. He didn't forget about me. He didn't forget. He didn't forget about me. Amen. He didn't forget about me. He didn't forget about me. I'm so thankful that God did not forget about me. Amen. Do me a favor for the next 30 seconds. Reach over and give somebody a quick testimony about where you were versus where you are right now. Come on. Talk to somebody. Now, since you shared your testimony, praise God for, for what he brought you from. Praise God that he didn't leave you. Oh, come on. Somebody need to praise him because he didn't leave you. The God that I serve would never leave you nor forsake you. Let's all stand to our feet all over the building. Reach over, grab somebody by the hand. Ooh, God, I thank you. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I need him every day. I need him every hour. I can do nothing without King Jesus in my life. I, I need him to make the right decisions. I need him to turn on the right street. I need him. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for the hand that I am holding. The one on the left, the one on the right, Lord God. Master, help us with resolving our issues. Master, help us be in the midst of us, Lord God, when we have to confront the ones that we have issues with. God, be with us. Bless us now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Bless our bishop. Traveling mercies all upon him, Lord God. Do me a favor, squeeze that hand.
spirit of the living God rests in this place. We thank you. God, we need thee. Amen. Loose those hands and give God a praise. Come on. The doors of this great church is open. If you're standing beside someone, sitting beside someone, reach over and ask them, are, are you saved? Come on, ask them, are you saved? Do you have a church home? Come on, quickly ask, are you saved? Do you have a church home? Wait for an answer. Wait, make sure they're, make sure they're covered. Make sure they're covered. Make sure everybody in the building's covered. Amen. If everybody in the building is covered and everybody in the building have a church home and everybody in here is saved, somebody should shout amen if everybody's saved. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to plant a seed tonight. We're going to do exactly the way Bishop has been doing it at the end of every service on Wednesday night. We have opportunity to give. Get something in your hand quickly. If you have some that came in that had not had an opportunity to give tonight, and we need to afford you that opportunity tonight. Amen? From all over the building, just start coming quickly. Come, quick, come. Get something in your hand. I'm determined to do better. I'm determined not to allow my issues to go unresolved. I'm determined that I'm going to fix it. Amen. I'm not going to beat myself up anymore. I'm not going to allow things to fester anymore. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Got you. I see you. I see you. Come on. Come on. Do me a favor. Put your hands together and celebrate God for this young lady who is coming. Oh, come on. She's coming to be a part of this great branch of Zion. Come on, celebrate Zion. Celebrate. Deacon Rousey, keep her right there. Amen. You get information from her. Pray with her. Pray for her. Amen. Thank God. Father, we thank you for the day. Thank you for life, health, strength, and peace. Now, Master, as we leave this place, but never your presence, continue to bless us and camp your angels all around us. Lord God, bring us back on this Sunday with a celebration on our heart and a celebration in our mind and a joy on our mind and a peace beyond all understandings. God, we thank you. Continue to bless. It's in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen.